During the midst of a cold ice age, cultures throughout Eurasia created strange figures. Chunks of wood, bone, and stone were carefully crafted to resemble often obese women. These strange statuettes seem to contradict our ideas about ancient people. Hunter-gatherers were active people who had to forage for everything they ate. We often imagine them as quite lean. So why would obese women be the centerpiece of Paleolithic artists? This strange artistic trend has baffled anthropologists for many years. Our understanding of these artifacts will in all honesty never be complete. However, a healthy amount of speculation perhaps can help us understand these ancient people. The oldest statuette of this nature is the Venus of Holofels. It was discovered in Germany and dates back to between 35 and 40,000 years ago. This would place it in the early Orignation. They were the first modern humans to truly settle Europe. The Venus of Holofels is sculpted from a woolly mammoth tusk. The figure displays a very large woman with unrealistic body proportions. It lacks legs or even a head. Unlike some other Venus figurines though, the arms are quite detailed. They seem to be holding up the breasts. The breasts are the highlight of the piece as well as the lower half. Instead of a head, it has a perforated protrusion that may have allowed it to be worn as an amulet. It is only 6 centimeters or 2.4 inches in length, so this very well could be the case. This figure is the oldest undisputed depiction of a human known. It is also the oldest Venus of this type. There are two older figures that could be considered Venus figurines though. The Venus of Barakat Ram and the Venus of Tantan are some of the oldest examples of art known. The former dates to 250,000 years ago, while the latter dates to as much as 500,000 years ago. Both of these objects are speculated to have been shaped to resemble the human form. However, no definite consensus has been made as much debate surrounds the topic. Still, these remain some of the most fascinating objects ever discovered. Venus figurines would become more common after the Orignation. The majority are found during the Gravettian, which dates to between 21 and 33,000 years ago. The Venus of Willendorf is the most famous of these artifacts. Its body proportions are a little more realistic than the Venus of Holofels, but still quite exaggerated. The object lacks feet and has a strange head. The bumps could be a representation of braided hair like seen on another Venus, the Venus of Brass and Boy. It is hard to tell. It could be some form of symbolism or some sort of mask. There are many different Venus figurines from the Paleolithic and there is a high diversity in their creation. Unlike the majority, some Venus figurines such as Galgenberg and Impudic are quite slim. Another figure not like the others is actually a stone relief carving. This Venus looks like the others but it is interestingly holding a horn. It is hypothesized that the notches in the horn may represent the number of lunar cycles or even menstrual cycles. I find this horn holding Venus to be one of the most fascinating examples of Paleolithic art known. However, this may be evidence that there was not one theme for these figurines. They likely had very different meanings for different people. The diversity could possibly be related to a diversity in sexual preference or social standards. This diversity does make it quite challenging to hypothesize a possible theme. Many possible explanations have been proposed. They have long been seen as symbols of fertility or possibly some sort of deity. Many are critical of this theory and some disregard it altogether. Personally, I find it quite likely that they represent an abstract concept of fertility. If you are a big fan of the channel, you may have seen my second episode on ancient artifacts. In it, I talked about the Egyptian fertility god of Min. This god was often worshipped by carrying around little statues and celebrating him at festivals. Of course, we cannot make one-to-one -one comparisons, but it is pretty reasonable to assume these figurines had something to do with fertility. The Stone Age was a time of intellectual darkness. 
Humans have always tried to understand the world and in a time before society or organized religion, the world would have certainly appeared as a very magical place. Men and women alike would have certainly understood the importance of women in bringing life into the world. In the book, Emergence of the Goddess, Helen Benigni argues that the consistency and design of these figures throughout a wide region and over a long period of time suggests they represent an archetype of a female supreme creator. Venus figurines are not limited to the Paleolithic. Neolithic figurines depict similar themes. Though I disagree with some of her points, her ideas do shed light on why this archetype has shown up so many times across prehistory. A very important thing to note is that these figurines almost certainly did not mean a uniform idea to these people. They are separated by thousands of miles and years. Even figurines that were made relatively close in time might have meant drastically different things. Humans are weird. In the modern day, the town down the road can be much different. We have every reason to assume that the Stone Age would have been full of a plethora of ideas. Placing any ideas about fertility or goddesses on this culture can certainly be problematic. Their ideas about fertility in all likelihood differ from ours and other cultures drastically. A theory that has gained popularity in recent years is that Stone Age women actually used them as mirrors. It has been suggested that because of the way these figures are depicted, such as large breasts and a lack of feet or faces, these statues were made by women looking at their own bodies. They suggest that women during the period would not have had access to mirrors to maintain accurate proportions. This theory also provides an explanation as to why many of the Venus figurines do not have heads or faces, as the creators would need mirrors to do so. However, Michael S. Bisson critiqued this theory by suggesting that alternatives such as puddles or even ice could have been used as mirrors. This idea is quite interesting and in all honesty is just as likely as any other. Another recent interpretation that I am quite fond of correlates with the climate of the time. The figurines were made during the last glacial maximum, a rather cold time. Johnson et al. 2020 found a correlation between an increase in distance from glacial fronts and a decrease in obesity of the figurines. This was justified as survival and reproduction as in glacial areas and colder areas required sufficient nutrition and consequently, overnourished women may have been seen as the ideal beauty in these areas. We have to acknowledge that beauty standards vastly vary in culture and time. This form very well could have been the ideal of the time. Another interesting theory was that these objects were used in some sort of marriage ceremony. Though we do not know how relationships functioned at this time, men and women may have had exclusive relationships similar to our modern concepts of marriage. These figures could have represented a lover or a bond. Maybe, perhaps, a husband even made one of these of his wife, or maybe the wife made it for him and then he would carry it around on long trips. Honestly, I'm quite fond of that idea. One of the most obvious interpretations that some people really do not like is the idea that these figures were used as sexual stimulants for Stone Age men. I think a lot of the criticism is honestly unwarranted. Male sex drive has driven us to do a lot crazier things than carving a woman out of stone. Perhaps these statues functioned as Stone Age porn. Another theory that I may have just created as I have not seen it mentioned anywhere has to do with virginity. Perhaps they were given to young men or young women when they first had sex. Cultures across time have put an importance on virginity so this wouldn't be too out of the ordinary. In all likelihood, we will never know the exact purpose of these figures. Hopefully the ideas mentioned in this video are probably in the ballpark of reality. The Stone Age is fascinating. If offered a time machine, I used to think that I would probably want to go back to the late Cretaceous or maybe the Jurassic. And nowadays, I think I would rather choose to watch some Stone Age festival or ritual take place. Or even just to live with the people of this time. They were so intimately connected with the land. I would love to see how they interacted with each other, the beasts, and their environment. 
to see humans without the burden of society that are as wild as the wolves. Alright, I think it's time for a Quest for Fire remake. Anyways, would you believe it? I'm almost at 100,000 subscribers. By the time of this upload, I'm going to be probably pretty close, and uh, probably by about Friday I will be at 100k. I just wanted to say a premature thanks, and I'll also be making a video thanking you guys and answering some questions. So thanks guys, bye. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Check out my Instagram and comment some video ideas down below. I make videos about history of humans, ancient animals, and the occasional full length documentary. If that sounds interesting, check out the over 100 videos I have made. Well, I'll see you on the next episode of Northo 2. See ya.